Hey, Chad from Grayscale Gorilla, and I get this question a lot about our surface imperfection maps that we have in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. People aren't really sure where to put them, what's the best practice, what's the best way to use these things. So I went ahead and made a video showing my favorite ways of using surface imperfection maps in Redshift. So let's check it out. All right, so let's talk about some surface imperfections here in Redshift. Okay. So if you're not a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, well, number one, you should be, because we have a ton of surface imperfection maps, and generally what they are is black and white tileable maps used to make things look less perfect, hence the name. And in our Plus library here, if you're a Plus member, you get access to all of our materials, textures, HDRIs, plugins, training, all that sort of thing. But today, we're going to talk about how I use surface imperfection maps and the different uses that I, I like to, to use. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a map here one from our new crust collection here. We're just going to drag that over to our Redshift nodes and drop it right in here. So here we are. Let's go ahead and isolate this. And we're going to go ahead and put that material on there and start up our IPR and get this going. Okay, so typically you're going to deal with these maps in a couple of different ways. But most of the time, I'm just going to scale this down just while we're talking here. So we get a little bit more detail in there. Um, typically you're going to use this, uh, in m many different ways, like I mentioned, but they're most likely going to be controlled with either a ramp or a change range. So let's just take this texture here. And again, uh, real quick, you can actually use a linear gamma or an sRGB gamma, depending on what you're doing. I typically keep it linear, but that's just me. Uh, it's more of a correct workflow, but Hey, it's art, do whatever you want. All right, so take this texture, we're gonna put it into this ramp input, and I'm gonna isolate that out to my surface so we can just see what that looks like. Nothing changed, because we're remapping these values in a ramp from zero to one, just like this. But the reason I use a ramp is because I want that visual control where I wanna be able to clamp the blacks down and maybe clamp the whites in a little bit. And it's this sort of visual control that you get with a ramp that'll, that's gonna allow you to really get some unique looks in your surface imperfections. So not only can you like add some clamping there, you might even be able to add a couple knots here at the end to kind of really remap things in a weird, interesting way to get even more grunge in there. So let's reset this back to default. Another thing you can do is obviously remap the value as well. So we can go from, instead of zero, we might want to go from like 28% to 50% or 58%. And you can kind of start to play around with these values and get different looks depending on where you're using it. The other way that I like to use them is in a change range, which is basically the exact same thing as a ramp, only it's not visual. It's a little bit more, uh, I guess, technical, where you have your old and your new. And in the old, this is kind of like, uh, let's just reset these back to default here. In the old, uh, that's kind of like, you know, your black point and your white point, and that's going to be zero and one here. So we can bring that black point up of the old and the max down of the old max. And this is kind of a confusing terminology here, new and old. Just think of this as like in and out. So in is like I'm taking the in of this texture and clamping the black and the white. And the out, I'm still remapping this to zero and one. Now we could lift the blacks by changing the, mat, the min on that new up to like 0.22. We might even be able to bring this down a little bit and get more of like a gray look. So this is typically something I'll use in a roughness if I really need that control to be able to see exactly what roughness values I'm using but more often than not, I'm using a ramp. Okay, so let's jump in here. Let's grab this first material. I'm gonna walk you through some of these materials and I've got a lot of these surface imperfections already set up from our plus library. So let's just jump into this roughness. So this is a typical use case for a surface imperfection map driving a materials roughness. So you can see right here, we've got a texture. Let me go ahead and isolate that. And it's a smear smudge map from the surface imperfection smudges from Grayscale Gorilla Plus. I'm putting this into a ramp, which I'm kind of bringing the value down a little bit, and I'm putting that directly into a roughness channel of a redshift material. So if we jump back into the ramp here, you can see I've already got it set up the way I like it, but let's go ahead and reset this. And it's basically gonna create something that's way, way, way too rough because we're, we're basically taking this texture and mapping it from black to white. And white is gonna be absolute the most rough it can be. It's like a 1.0 a 1 on roughness which is not what we want. We probably want something that's closer to like a 30% or maybe even a 50%. That's looking pretty good. And then um, the darkest it can get or the cleanest it can get is zero, which is not really what I want either because I don't want it to be completely clean. So I'm gonna raise that up to maybe like 20% and I'm just gonna clamp it a little bit to create a little bit more contrast in that surface imperfection. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So 
um, we're using it here in roughness, which is a typical use case for surface imperfection. So the next one that I'll show you is using it in bump. So if we look at this material, we've got a crust surface imperfection uh, driving a ramp. Let's go ahead and isolate that. And that's going into a bump map, which the value is set pretty low, and that's going into the bump channel of a redshift material. And it kind of gives us this bumpy uh, material, this bumpy like painted red material. Again, we can take that ramp and adjust it. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. We'll reset this to default, which is just going to make a very overall kind of bumpy material because we're using that, that crusty surface imperfection map there. But maybe we want to make it look like it's pitted, like the surface is cut in. So in that case, I want my white to be remapped to something darker than 50%, so maybe like 20%, because remember, 50% is kind of like the water level of the surface. And we'll change this to 50%. So now uh, our texture is going to go from 50% down to 20% to kind of create a chiseled out, kind of pitted look. Now we can clamp this even further by just kind of taking this down and bringing our, our gray down and now we're just getting tiny little spots of spec kind of pushed into that surface. All right, so the next way you can use a surface imperfection map is going to be maybe to reveal some details in a, in a decal. It's almost like this decal has been kind of worn away a little bit. So we have that same material that we had before, the red material with some smudge maps going on. And we are now taking this decal, this decal texture, PNG, with the uh, Redshift logo. We're splitting out the alpha with an RS color splitter. And we're going to be multiplying a grunge, another uh, surface imperfection crust map. We're going to be multiplying that on top of that PNG's alpha and then putting that into a RS color layer. And the RS color layer kind of acts like a Photoshop comp. It's got blending modes and layers. So you can see here we've got the color of our red in our base color. And then our decal is added on top with a matte. And again, like I said, we're taking that crust and we're, we're multiplying that against our alpha to kind of make it look like the stickers worn away. That's going directly into the diffuse color, and there you go. You got yourself a little uh, war worn and torn. Worn and torn? Wear and tear? It's a messed up sticker, basically. All right, so if we jump into the layer bump version, so this is just kind of taking it one step further here. And this is combining the bump that we did before on that base material. And then we're also adding yet another material. So you can notice here, we've got a couple different materials, and we're using a material blender. And this texture, it's another, uh, I think this is another one from our crust collection. We're clamping it down with another ramp, and we're actually using a blend material, which is going to take this red material and this kind of like white painted material, and we're chiseling away and revealing it wherever it's white here in a material blender, Redshift Material Blender. So now we kind of have this like really worn look, like maybe it's bumped up against something that was painted white and some of the paint was left behind on it. And we have a nice like war, worn out kind of look. So we're using in this material something that's driving a decal opacity. And we have another one that's doing the roughness. And then we, now we're using it to actually reveal two different materials. So there's lots of different uses here. Okay, so in this last material, we've got a combination of things going on here. We can see we've got a, our red material that we had earlier. Let's go ahead and start the IPR. And um, we've got a... That, that white material right here, the white painted material, but then we also have this like iron metal material. And basically what we're doing is we're gonna take another surface imperfection map. This time we've got uh, our surface imperfection scratches, which are, we have a great collection of uh, surface imperfection scratches that you can choose from in, in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And we're using these scratches as a bump map in this material, but we're also using it to reveal this blend, this redshift material blend to make it look like we have a painted shader ball and underneath it is metal and somebody dropped it or scuffed it and now it's revealing that metal underneath. So yeah, and then lastly, on top of that, I went ahead and threw a kind of a generic dark material on there and I'm revealing it with a little map here, another grunge crust, a uh, surface imperfection map. And this is kind of making it look a little dirty and I kind of keep it pretty subtle but I'm just added another layer here to make it look interesting and kind of messed up. So in this one material, we've got a lot going on. We've got our original red material where we're using it to, to use, use it for the opacity of that decal. We're using it in the roughness. We're using another one in the bump on that painted material. We're using it, we're using another one, a crust to reveal a different material, a scratch to reveal a different material. 
there's a lot of stuff, a lot of ways that you can use surface imperfections to kind of add that realism to your materials. I hope you got something out of this video. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to expand on in future videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. If you liked the video and got something out of it, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about our surface imperfection maps over on Grayscale Gorilla Plus, there's a link down below in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. We've got tons of awesome stuff. We've got plugins, materials, textures, surface imperfection maps, training. We've got everything over in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So go check it out. And until next time, I'll see you around.